Hey guys, welcome back to Small Engines Q&A video number 102. It's a really hot day today in Ontario, Canada. It's approximately 30 degrees Celsius and 38 degrees Celsius humid X, so it's really hot. Usually we don't get this hot weather till July, but I don't mind it. And now before I get started, I want to welcome all my new subscribers and I want to thank all my faithful viewers and all those who support me in different ways for my YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. So my first question today from a YouTuber is, how often can I reuse an exhaust gasket? Well, the answer to that is you can reuse it as long as it's not brittle or broken and that the exhaust doesn't leak through it. I'll just show you a couple of old gaskets I have that I reuse from time to time. So here's some gaskets here. They are all exhaust gaskets. This one's from a grass trimmer. This one here is from a larger chainsaw. And this one's from a smaller chainsaw, I believe, or a grass trimmer. As you can see, the exhaust gaskets have some kind of metal in them. They're not like the intake gaskets, which are made of cardboard. So when you take them apart, if they're still intact like this, you can go right ahead and reuse it. And as you can see, this one's in really good condition. When I take stuff apart, I save the large gaskets like this because sometimes if ever you need to make a gasket, you've got the material kicking around. Now if your gasket was intact all around, but it was missing layers, then the exhaust could escape through there. So you should replace it if it's chipped or really brittle and breaking apart. But when you see them in this good a condition, you can reuse them for sure. Now I've got a few intake gaskets here, and I'm just going to show you a few rules to follow if you're going to reuse them as well. So these gaskets all come from smaller two-cycle engines, but the same principle will apply to four-cycle engines. Now the intake gasket goes between the carburetor and the cylinder, and I've saved these from different things I took apart. They are still good to reuse. This one may not be that good to reuse because it's missing little parts here, but these ones here would be good. You can always add a thin film of gasket maker around the gasket if it doesn't look too good, but always make sure not to plug the small holes, especially this little hole here which feeds the carburetor with impulses of air from the crankcase. And by the way, you can buy gasket material at any auto parts store to make your own gaskets. And while I'm talking about gaskets, I may as well talk about used head gaskets as well. So again, I get the same question in regards to head gaskets. This one's from a Briggs & Stratton lawn tractor engine. This one's from a lawnmower engine. So to start with, I'm going to talk about this gasket over here from a lawnmower. Now, if I took off a head and the gasket was in this good of condition, I would reuse the gasket. Unless I see oil coming out the sides of the head, then I wouldn't use it. But this is in really good condition. It can be used a few times over. Now if I'm talking about the Briggs & Stratton lawn tractor engine gasket, you can see right here that there's pieces missing. And that's a dead giveaway to not reuse this gasket. When this gasket is damaged like this, your lawn tractor will burn a lot of oil and really smoke a lot. And as you can see, it's a different texture on this gasket than the lawnmower gasket I just showed you. So pretty well, when you take the head off, you have to replace the gasket each time. Now another question I got the other day is somebody asked me, do you consider cleaning the carbon from the exhaust port of a two-cycle engine as regular maintenance? Well, my answer to that is yes, you should do it every year, but be careful while doing this because you don't want to send pieces of carbon inside the cylinder. Also, if you neglect to do this over the years, the carbon could actually break off and then go in the cylinder and damage your piston and rings and the cylinder and then your whole motor is shot. So if you're new to small engines this is what I'm talking about is the exhaust port where the muffler goes. Now if you use a lot of oil in your gas it's going to build up a lot quicker. So therefore it's good to check and scrape off any carbon that has built up in your exhaust port every year. Now another question I got the other day is a YouTuber asked me, can low compression make a grass trimmer hard to start? The answer to that is yes, it can because there's not enough compression for the engine to run properly. Here's an echo trimmer, so I'm talking in general about any two cycle engine here. If you have low compression, it's going to be really hard to adjust the carburetor properly. It's going to be really hard to start whether it's cold or hot, and it's not going to have the same power that it used to have. So you can always do a compression test on your equipment to see where it's at. I do have videos that show how to do a compression test. You can just do a search on my channel. Another question I often get in regards to outboard motors, is there always supposed to be water coming out from the little hose over here? 
Well, the answer to that is yes, there should always be a stream of water coming out of the hose underneath the engine. And when you see the stream of water coming out steadily, you know that your engine is getting cooled and that the impeller and the lower unit of your engine is working properly. On this engine, it's right here, it's a small hole. And when you start it, you see a little stream. I had to replace the impeller in this engine because it was just sporadic and a bit of steam was coming out as well. So if you see some steam coming out of here, stop your engine immediately and get it checked by a professional. More than likely, the impeller needs to be replaced. And it's a small rubber part inside over here and all it does is it pumps the water up the tube through the engine and then it exits out this little hole over here. And again, that ensures that your engine stays nice and cool. And by the way, the impeller is usually an inexpensive part. It's between 10 to $30. In my next question today, some guy has an old lawnmower like this with an older Briggs and Stratton engine, pretty well identical to this. And he's wondering why it's burning a lot of oil. What could be causing the engine to burn a lot of oil is if the piston rings and the valve guides are worn out, especially with an older engine like this that is over 20 years old. Things get worn out and at this point you may just want to go buy another lawnmower. If it has sentimental value to you, you may want to replace the piston rings and see how that goes. Also you could use an SAE 30 oil which is thick oil for the summertime that may help it to not burn as much oil. Last week I talked briefly about dipsticks when you check the oil in your engine. The question that had come up last week was should you screw in the dipstick all the way or just leave it on top of the threads when checking the oil? So again I thought I'd bring up the subject because I have this tractor here in my shop and on this Kohler engine here it shows exactly how to check the oil in your engine. Right here it shows it's incorrect if the cap is not screwed into the dipstick tube and here it shows that it's correct when it's screwed down all the way. Now not every engine's like this, some you have to check it this way and not this way, total opposite. So always check with your manufacturer. If you bought something brand new, there may be a tag like this on the engine or in the owner's manual. But on this Kohler Courage engine, you have to check it that way by screwing the dipstick all the way down. And by the way, this is a pretty nice tractor. It's one of the better ones from Troy Built. And this guy here has put a winch in the front. I'm not sure what he's going to pull with it or where he's going to go with the tractor. But I'm sure that winch will pull that tractor out of anything. And here's how it's mounted in case you want to see that. If you do decide to put one on your tractor, you may want to weld some brackets to make it fit. And at the rear of the tractor, he's got the switch for the winch. And the last question I'm going to answer today is in regards to these tapered shafts on generators. A YouTuber is asking me how can he reuse this engine on something else. Unless you're using it on another generator that requires a tapered shaft, the only way to properly reuse this engine would be to get another crankshaft from an identical engine. And this is what the regular shafts look like. They're usually an inch, five-eighths or three-quarters and they have a hole for a key. These engines are way more versatile than one with a tapered shaft. So what you would have to do, like I said, is get a crankshaft like this and insert it into your engine that has the tapered shaft. So you would just have to do a total swap. Another option you have is to keep the armature, which is tapered over here. It does fit on the shaft, so you can maybe take these parts off or machine it down. If you have a lathe, you could do it yourself. And you could also bring it to a machine shop, but it's going to be very expensive to do that. You could also ask a machine shop if they can make the shaft nice and straight for you instead of it being tapered like this. By the way, this is an older Honda engine that I took out of a blown up generator. And it's been sitting here ever since for two years. It runs really good. The only thing is because the shaft is tapered like that, I don't really have much of a use for it. And I can't find another crankshaft. So thanks again for watching guys. I want to thank you again for all your support. A special thanks goes out to Backwoods Country Boy or Mower Medic One. I'll put the link to his channel under this video. Go check him out and subscribe to him as well. He's got some really good knowledge on small engines as well. And he offers some really good tips in his videos. So have a great weekend guys and we'll see you in two weeks.